So here's a brief overview of the four main locks that are on a C-arm. If you're using a GEC arm that has the smart view lock, then you would have five available. So the first one I'll describe is the in and out lock. You usually have a control lever or a lock at the back here. And what that does, it allows the boom to move in and out of the field. You can see that there are calibrations on this arm uh, up to 20 centimeters. So typically when you come into a case, uh, especially as you're starting out new, you want to set your boom arm about halfway and that way when you get into the field you have a little bit of wiggle room to move forward a bit or come back. In future videos we'll show that in a lot more detail. Okay and the next lock we'll demonstrate is the C lock or the C arm lock, sometimes called your orbital, sometimes your overscan, underscan and this, this lock here and what that does it allows the intensifier and tube housing to rotate over if you have to overscan, or if you're under scanning to, into a lateral position, it allows your C-arm to come all the way down and it goes 90 degrees or 180 degrees to the floor. This particular model that I'm using is a 9600, so it doesn't have manual tilt locks or caudal cephalic tilt. Um, sometimes physicians may refer to that as inlet outlet if you're working with orthopedic surgeons. Uh, this particular machine has two buttons on top here which allows the machine to go cephalic or caudal depending on the orientation of your patient. And this one being motorized is a little bit slower. The ones that you would typically use in practice would have a manual lock and it provides a lot more detail and control of getting just that angle correct. And once you're competent, it allows for faster movement into those positions. Some procedures that would involve that would be pelvic imaging, or tibial plateau surgeries, or calcaneus, things of that nature. And the next log that we'll describe is the WAG function. Uh, that allows your assembly to move or sweep uh, 10 degrees to the left or 10 degrees to the right and that allows that function there. Again for all of these locks you want to ensure that your base is locked and that ensures that only the direction that you're wanting the lock to function in would happen. If I try this again with my base unlocked what happens is when I unlock this and I turn I can then actually pivot the entire machine. So if you want to maintain that base, make sure your base is locked. If you're doing primarily orthopedic um, surgeries, that's not a function that you would really use a great deal just because it can deviate the angle. There's only a few instances where I would particularly use this machine. Uh, I want to make sure that I maintain my base perpendicular to the body part that I'm looking at when I can. Again, very few instances. I'm sure we'll demonstrate those in some uh, upcoming examples. Um, but typically, this is not a, uh, a lock that I would use. And if your facility has a GE machine, chances are it has this feature here, the smart view. It's not on all of their lineup, but it's on a majority. So your 9800s, your 9900s, and your OEC elites. I find it a, a very, very functional lock for pelvic cases and acetabulums. Um, it's not really a, a lock for the novice, so you may hear it called the never lever, or um, when you're being onboarded, they may say, oh, we don't touch that one. It has the opportunity to get you in a lot of trouble and not really understand how the image is working, but with a little bit of practice, I, I personally find it the most useful lock. Um, and it really opens up a whole world of uh, versatility for me in many of the cases that I would perform. So, unlocking this one, it gives the appearance that it performs a tilt, but it's actually moving in three dimensions as well because you can see the actual lock itself is slanted. So it's tilting on an axis. It's not as 90 degrees uh, as your traditional tilt lock. GE describes its function for lining up end plates on lateral lumbar spine or for helping line up perfect circles uh, if you're doing any IN nailing. I find it very valuable for acetabulum and pelvic cases 
because it gives me a much greater range of motion without having to move my base during many of the features of that case. Definitely describe this further in future videos, so hopefully